a graphic video of Ahmed Aubrey's brutal murder was posted online. The video, which police have had since the shooting, shows a former cop and investigator in the district attorney's office, Greg McMichael and his 34-year-old son, Travis, blocking Aubrey's path as he's jogging, then Travis shooting him with a shotgun after a struggle. Governor Brian Kemp has pledged to help the state law enforcement to, quote, ensure justice is served, end quote. Georgia prosecutor Tom Duran announced Tuesday he will seek to impanel a grand jury to consider the criminal charges in the February 23rd killing in Glen County. Massachusetts Governor Baker has issued an order effective Wednesday, May 6, requiring face masks or cloth face coverings in public places where social distancing is not possible. This applies to both indoor and outdoor spaces. Exceptions include children under the age of two and those unable to wear a mask or face covering due to a medical condition. Hi, I'm Katie and welcome back to What's Left. This week we're making chocolate chocolate chip cookies. For our ingredients, you'll need two thirds cup flour, four tablespoons butter, eight ounces semi-sweet chocolate, half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon vanilla extract, and half teaspoon baking soda. You'll also need three fourths cup packed brown sugar and two eggs. First, set the oven to 350 degrees. Start by cutting the butter into small chunks. Then add in your semi-sweet chocolate. You can use semi-sweet chocolate chips or a bar of semi-sweet chocolate, in which case you should chop up. Then melt the butter and the chocolate in the microwave at 30 second increments. I did two 30 second increments and stirred in between each one. Once it's melted enough, stir to loosen any chunks of chocolate. In another bowl, add your flour, baking soda, and salt. Whisk this together. In the bowl of an electric mixer, add your brown sugar, eggs, and vanilla extract. Beat this on high until well blended. Then add in the chocolate and the butter mixture. Finally, add the flour mixture and beat until just combined. Hand mix in additional chocolate chips. Then take an ungreased baking sheet and use a spoon to dollop cookies onto the sheet. The consistency should be more batter-like than dough-like. Bake the cookies for 12 to 15 minutes, rotating the sheet halfway through. Bake only until the cookies look soft on top. Make sure not to overbake. Cool them on a rack and enjoy your chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Charlie Reed, and today on The Person Show, I'm joined by a very special guest, um, M.F. Vanderschlimp. Today, I'm joined by M.F. Vanderschlimp, um, renowned uh, author of the new book, The Forgotten Icon of the 19th Century, Millard Fillmore. Um, Vanderschlimp, could you, could you uh, tell us about your new book? Um, yes, so before I get into that, uh, I cannot believe you did not introduce my cat, Ruffles. Say hi, Ruffles, hi! You're renowned for your, your wild name. Um, could you tell us the backstory about, about that? So I used to be called um, Timothy when I was younger. But as I realized, as time uh, wore on, I kind of, I was a big reader. I like to read whole encyclopedias. I came across um, this man who was called Millard Fillmore. And I said, huh, what a cool name. So I kept looking into him, and it turns out Millard Fillmore was the 13th president of the United States. That's when I was like, I got to change my name to Millard Fillmore. When you hear the name and the Fender Schlint, you obviously think of Stephen King. And you know, we all know that that you were sort of main main player in a lot of his a lot of his works. Um, and actually, before the interview, you told me that you uh, you think he's a pile of trash. You stole all your work. What did you? He said that what did you what did you mean i ghost wrote for him while he was in rehabilitation for um his various drug habits but his best books i actually wrote i actually didn't end up reading any of the fine print on my contract so i got a tiny amount of royalties yeah it was 
quite unfortunate, so he kind of screwed me. Uh, to boot, he uh, actually stole all my money that I had made from writing his books to buy more uh, Colombian Bam Bam to write the infamous book, It. You know, next time you think of Stephen King, um, your boy, M.S. Vanderschlimp, wrote most of his works. Just remember that. That's, that's very interesting. So Voldemort, or my equivalent, whose name was Thomas the Bald Eagle, that was his name. He was actually based on Anderson Cooper, believe it or not. You know, and you'll see a lot of uh, resemblances in personality uh, when you read my work. All of my um, antagonists have those, have Anderson Cooper qualities. Folks, you heard it here first on the transcript. Voldemort, who was based on Tommy the Bald Eagle, who was based on Anderson Cooper, was invented by M.F. Vanderslip. That's correct. What, what a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And, you know, to all the, all the viewers, obviously we, we had a ton of fun today. Um, you know, we, we learned a lot about writing, but I, I would also like to, you know, just say in this crazy time, you know, please wash your hands and make sure when you stop watching the transcript, eat a couple hot dogs, have a glass of milk, and spend time with your loved ones. And buy the Chamolay diet. I've been on it and it's done wonders for me. The Chalamet diet is, is up now. Hi, I'm Millard Fillmore Vanderschlimp. And during these incredibly taxing times, it would be a great idea to write your experience down. Um, please um, record this somehow and then email lucas.visensinlang at stu.northampton-k12.us so you can contribute to an archive of collections from people living in the Pioneer Valley during the coronavirus pandemic. And if you don't, that's not very Millard Fillmore of you. Thank you. Shortly after Governor Baker announced the closing of all Massachusetts high schools, the MIA announced the cancellation of the 2020 spring season. With that, the seniors don't get their one last hurrah. Juniors, sophomores, and freshmen don't get a vital season for their recruiting status. We sat down with members of Northampton High School to discuss the cancellation of a very important season. We didn't have that high expectations, but last year we didn't really have high expectations either, and we ended up doing pretty well, so you never really know how it could have gone, but we were still pretty young, so we weren't expecting much. <laughs> you're, mute, you're muted, Joe. I do think it was the right decision to cancel the season. Um, I mean, obviously it's sad. It had to be done for health reasons. I kind of wish I had plans to like play on the summer team just for one final hurrah. I didn't think we'd get our final hurrah taken away. The season being canceled and obviously school being canceled, like it's just made the whole thing sad, honestly. Especially because like playing a sport like is something you go to school and then you play your sport and playing your sport is usually the more enjoyable part than mm -hmm. going to school. So that was, that's definitely really upsetting. You can't even go outside and play with your friends. My initial reaction to the season being canceled, uh, you know, it was kind of a downer looking forward to a, playing some tennis, but at the same time, wasn't too mad because, you know, this season we we're missing like some of our key players like Stefan and stuff. We probably were not going to be, as strong as we were last year. This will definitely affect how I'm being recruited for college from tennis because it's such a long period of time that there are like no tournaments, um, no training, no courts available. And all these points that you've gained from like the last year are just like leaving as yeah. time goes on and it's really taking a hit. I'm hoping for the next year that tennis will come back I'm hoping it won't be that long because it was just really hard, especially for me, since I got injured right at the end of the season. Um, I 
it looks really bad <laughs> on my like resume right now and I just don't have anything to show for it probably was the right decision since every other sport's getting canceled like I don't think tennis is like that big of a outlier compared to all the other ones but I don't know I think it was the right decision that the season was canceled mainly because of the transportation and just the general dangers of spreading the virus um like getting in a bus with all the other people on your team and seeing week after week just new people it's probably too dangerous i'm hoping tennis comes back before other sports because the court is kind of big it's 72 feet um, between the people so it's definitely not as contact sport as the other sports would be so I, i'm hoping it'd come back faster While many of my senior peers look towards college, the only thing we can say for certain pertains to how uncertain our academic future is shaping up to be. Colleges around the world shut down unexpectedly. Some places like Harvard let their students know the weekend of spring break not to come back, whereas UMass to told students to move out the same day they announced the transition to online learning. With students moving back home, refunds are more than called for, as students are not getting the academic experience they had paid for. This week, I sat down with some UMass Amherst students to get a better look at how these refunds were carried out, as well as some insight to the possibilities of the next academic year.